Hey everyone, today's topic is going to be adjusting entries. These are relevant for both those learning in school and those in the workplace. We will explain adjusting entries and go through a few examples. But before we do, please subscribe so you don't miss any future content and comment with any questions or topics you want to see covered. Okay, let's start by explaining what are adjusting journal entries. Adjusting entries are defined as journal entries usually made at the end of an accounting period to allocate income and expenditures to the period in which they actually occurred. The two types that are most popular are adjusting entries for prepayments and accruals. At a high level, let's look at some easy to follow examples to make it clear what exactly we're talking about. The easiest example to think through is prepaid expenses. Let's say you paid cash for insurance for one year. You have essentially made a payment for a benefit you will receive over the one year. So each month you will need to record the benefit or one month's worth of expense for that insurance. The entry for the monthly expense and to reduce your prepaid is considered the adjusting entry. Another typical adjusting entry are accruals for goods or services that you've received but perhaps have not been invoiced for yet. So for example, if you've consumed electricity all month but haven't received your electric bill, you still need to recognize that expense under accrual accounting. In some circumstances, you may have to make an estimate based on historical experience, trends, or other data points to make the best accrual. So why do we make these adjusting entries? These adjusting entries are made due to the matching principle in accrual accounting. That means the expense or revenue should match when the benefit is received, not necessarily when the cash is paid. In our first example of an annual insurance premium, the insurance covers a period of one year and should be allocated across that year. It would be incorrect to recognize all the expense in the month paid if its benefit would be realized over the next year. In this episode, we are going to go over seven common styles of adjusting entries, including their journal entries. What is important here is to follow the thought process so you can apply it to your individual case or situation. So let's jump into our first example of supplies. Let's suppose you are given the following information. At the beginning of the month, you had $3,000 in supplies. During the month, you bought 5,000 new supplies and at month end, a count showed that you had $2,000 in supplies remaining. To determine our expense and then the adjusting entry, we need to figure out how many supplies were actually used. So let's use a T account and set up the 3,000 on the left side. We have an addition of 5,000 from the purchase, so that's a debit, and we know our ending balance of $2,000. So now we just need to solve for the current period's expense. The plug is 6,000 of expense. Therefore, the adjusting journal entry would be a debit to supplies expense for 6,000 and a credit to supplies for 6,000. Okay, we will make the remainder of the example simpler where you don't need to solve for the answer. Our second adjusting entry example is doubtful accounts. You have an ending balance of accounts receivable of $100,000 and are told to apply a 5% reserve against that balance. Therefore, 5% of 100,000 is 5K. So at month end, you book the following adjusting entries, a debit to doubtful accounts expense and your credit to allowance for doubtful accounts. On to the next example, which is depreciation. We suggest watching our previous episode on depreciation and how to calculate depreciation for a refresher on that topic. You need to record depreciation for your equipment that has a $12,000 value, zero salvage value, and a 10-year life. That means this month's depreciation is $100. Therefore, our adjusting journal entries are a debit to depreciation expense for $100 and a credit to accumulated depreciation. Next is prepaids. Let's change up our adjusting entry period to a quarter for this one. You paid $2,400 for a one-year insurance policy. When you bought the policy, your entries were a debit to prepaid insurance and a credit to cash. You are attempting to recognize the expense for the full quarter, so that's three months or one-fourth of the policy. Therefore, our expense is $600. This adjusting entry for the quarter is a debit to insurance expense and a credit to prepaid insurance. Switching to an adjusting entry related to revenue, let's say you have a customer who pays you ahead of shipping, but revenue is recognized upon arrival at your customer. In this case, you may have the cash, but you have not earned the revenue. Let's use $1,000 for a computer you sold, but haven't shipped. Your customer gave you the cash and you originally wrote a journal entry as follows, a debit to cash for $1,000 and a credit to revenue for $1,000. You also booked the cost of goods sold. Let's say that was $600. So you booked a debit to cost of goods sold for $600 and a credit to inventory. Okay, upon checking that the inventory is still in transit, you must put in your adjusting entries. The first part of this is to de-recognize revenue. Your adjusting entry is to debit revenue for $1,000 and a credit to deferred revenue, which is a liability account. You have created this liability because the customer has provided you cash and you are liable to complete the arrangement. Your other adjusting entry is to re-recognize inventory and de-recognize the cost of goods sold. So that's a debit to inventory and transit and a credit to cost of goods sold. 
Okay, so now back to our electricity accrual example, which represents an expense that you have benefited from, but you may have not gotten your bill by the end of the month. Every month, there are accruals made for recurring and known expenses. In this example, we know we need to accrue for our electricity bill. We have averaged $300 a month and believe this to be our best estimate. Therefore, our adjusting entry is to debit utility expense for $300 and a credit to utility accrual, an accrual liability. Okay, let's go one step further. Let's say next month the bill comes in and it's $280. What do you do then? Your adjusting entry for this is to debit the accrual account for the $300 and a credit to your payable account for $280. The difference of $20 will be booked through a reduction of expense by crediting utility expense. Our last example is an accrual for revenue. This is for revenue you have earned but have not collected or billed at month end. Let's keep it simple with the sale of a computer that was earned upon shipment. You shipped it on the last day of the month, but you have not billed for the transaction. Therefore, you must accrue for the earned revenue. In this example, let's say it was $1,000 again, and an inventory value of $600. Therefore, you would book the following adjusting entries. A debit to unbilled accounts receivable for $1,000 and a credit to revenue. The other entry is a debit to cost of goods sold for $600 and a credit to inventory. So let's wrap up there. Comment with any additional questions you may have and we can expand and help. Please subscribe so you don't miss any new content. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you can, donate to Patreon. Anything you can give helps to keep the lights on and ensures we can continue to create content. And of course, helps feed FIFO. If you want to contact us about anything you saw in this video, accounting advice, or ideas for future videos, contact us at patreon.com slash accountingacademy. This video is designed to be illustrative and does not represent an official position. We make no representations, warranties, or guarantees and assume no responsibility for the application of this material. Please seek advice from a competent professional if expert assistance is required.